Well, hello. Bowtie Dave here, and we're going to do something a little different. We are in, as you can tell, the Bowtie Kitchen. Mrs. Bowtie may have to consult with me because we are going to do some water bath canning of jelly. All that pomegranate juice is just aching to get used for something exciting. And uh, so we're going to make some two batches of jelly. One is going to be a sugar-free and one is going to be a regular one. Actually, I should reverse that. One's going to be a regular straight recipe and the other one is going to be sugar-free with stevia. Uh, so I'm very excited about that. We've got our uh, supplies here. We're going to have uh, jars in the dishwasher, sanitizing. If you ever needed to sanitize things, you put the dishwasher on that Santa wash, the high heat, everything, and it will sanitize for you. It's what it does. Uh, oh, and the little baggies of dried leaves in the corner are not what you think they are. They are mint tea. This is chocolate mint, the other one is peppermint. So, yeah. Don't call on any officials on the, on, on us. This is good stuff. Oh my goodness, I love growing the mints. Have you seen our uh, garden tours? You've seen what I'm talking about. All the bags of mints I have growing everywhere. But uh, anyway, <laughs> here we go. Be sure to like this video if you see anything uh, entertaining or informational. Maybe you learned something new. But I wanted to show how to make the jellies. And uh, it's not my first time to do it, but it's pretty close, so we're still kind of learning together. Um, I may have to consult with Mrs. Bowtie on a couple of things in the process. So, again, here we go. Hi, I'm Bowtie Dave. So here we go. First things first, I've already started the canning water, so it's heating on the oven. Uh, I did want to show you here real quick. We have lids, we have a whole, whoops, we have a whole bunch of lids, we have a whole bunch of rings here. You'll see I put the lids in a stainless steel tray up there, and I'll put the rings, and I just separate them out so that we can get to them when we need to. But remember, we're going to be running this dishwasher uh, and sanitizing with it because the dishwasher is a very handy sanitizer. This is something we learned from, uh, I believe the Stivers uh, mentioned doing this and we thought, hey, that's a real good idea. And so we've been doing it this way. And with everything we've done so far and uh, we're very pleased, it does make everything in here very hot and in fact too hot to touch so that's a that makes us feel good <laughs> anyway got my reading glasses on right now so we got a whole bunch of lids here and probably don't have enough I'm gonna have to add more here later but I've got I think 16 half pints and six full pint jars to uh, put jellies in. Now all I've done is I've left out whoop, I've left out the silverware tray. We're not going to put that in there. There's no need for that in there. Um, so, but I do like to separate these lids like so and then uh, all closed up. I turn on, whoops, Turn on Power Blast, which gives us 3 hours, 17 minutes on this particular Maytag. Uh, high temp and Santa rinse. So no matter how long I'm taking over here at the stove, this thing is still running. It's always running. It's going to be running until we're done. Hopefully, 3 hours, eee, I'm going to have to start it again later. But anyway, there we go. So you're going to be hearing that in the background the whole time. By the way, that's the food processor from yesterday when I harvested all the juice. So... This is the next day. So, here we are. <laughs> We've got the water bath canner heating up. I have did this before I shot the intro. I started that when I had the coat on. Notice I've got a uh, apron on now. I don't want to get my nice yellow shirt uh, spotted. Mm-hmm. Okay, we have a, well, the recipe calls for a six quart 
pot, I only I have a four and an eight, so I'm going with the eight. I actually used the four last time, and the bubbling up got a little bit much, so ah, I was a little worried about that. So I have the two different types of sure gel. Uh, this is just the stuff that you buy at your Walmart or Winn Dixie or whatever grocery store you go to. Very standard stuff. Um, I want to try some of the nicer stuff that I hear Melissa K. Norris and some of the others talk about. Um, but this is what I'm, I'm, I'm a beginner. So, and, and folks, I'm not a chef, okay? I'm not a dietitian. I'm not, in fact, Mrs. Bowtie doesn't even let me in her kitchen most of the time. Me being here, I had to sneak in, okay? She's, she's hiding in the bedroom uh, for fear of what might explode. No, not really. I haven't exploded anything in <laughs> at least two weeks. Woo! <laughs> That's the, uh, it's getting settled in there. Um, I do have the sugar here. I have, uh, we are going later in the second batch, we're going to use stevia. Um, I like stevia a lot better. There are some challenges with uh, Splenda that I'm not crazy about. Um, one thing about sweetener though, and I'm gonna say this again before we're done, but one thing about the sweetener is when you're doing stevia, now this thing here says, um, great for baking, Measures cup for cup like sugar, okay? That may be so for some recipes. No, not for jellies. Um, in fact, we've done a bit of research and uh, typically what you do, you, you figure out how much sugar would be used and you cut that by about a third to a quarter and then you use that much stevia uh, or Splenda for that matter. In fact, if you look at the recipe for the, uh, the sure gel pectin that comes with it, you'll see when you compare the sugar-free versus the uh, non-sugar-free uh, versus the sugar recipe, uh, it puts a lot less Splenda in. And I don't, like I said, I already said, said I don't like Splenda. There's some challenges with that. Um, I'm not sure I would want to have my children eating that much Splenda. So, um, and my brain's already messed up as it is, so I'm going to stick with Stevia. Uh, I got me a great big measuring cup. I got a few smaller measuring cups laying around here. Um, one thing that's going to become important later when we're filling up the bottles is a big ladle. And we have a nice big ladle here. And we have a funnel. Now this funnel, um, I got this off of Amazon. Uh, this is not big enough for filling mason jars. Uh, I, I read the description. And it said large mouth funnel. It didn't say large mouth for canning jars. And so that's what I got right now. I'm going to have to live with it. Um, I do have my handy dandy phone here. And the reason why I have this here is because I have the recipe here up for pomegranate jelly. And um, I'm going to re re refer to this frequently. It talks about putting the lemon juice in. Um, and so forth. So I'm going to be following the recipe here. I'm going to be following instructions on the uh, sure gel sheet that came with the sure gel. Uh, so I'm doing a whole bunch of stuff here at the same time. Um, I probably could write this all down somewhere, but I'm not that organized. I'm really not. I better check that. Sure enough, some of it fell out. Looky there. Some of the rings felt, got blown off their uh, pegs. That's funny. Ugh. That hadn't happened before. So, back to this. And I can hear that water starting to go. Another thing I do, we do have a lot of water in here and I'm, I'm afraid I probably have too much. Um, in fact, I had, I had the pot sitting on two burners here. Since it's heating up so well, it's covered right now. So I'm not gonna let it go too far. I'm gonna let it kind of stay, not quite boiling, because it's on the edge of boiling. That's really what I want to get it to. We always keep a pot of water going because in case we don't have enough in here, uh, then we can always add a little bit. And you want to have some hot water ready to go because you can't be, um, you can't be running around trying to get more water heated up because if you put cold water in there, it's going to take longer to boil. 
and that's a pain. Okay, we got to do something different here. Um, I'll be right back. So the first time it had blown two rings, two of the small rings off the bottom rack and into the, into down by the filaments, the heating filaments, elements. And uh, so I got those two back up. I thought, okay, we're good. When I opened it the second time, there's like 15 of them down there. So I moved the rings to the top rack where it's not blowing so hard. And I moved the jars to the bottom rack, which is where we normally put them. Okay, <laughs> trying this again. I have water boiling everywhere. We're getting ready to rock and roll here. So uh, I'll admit, I'm a little excited. I do have plenty of lemon juice here. I just came out of the fridge. Um, is there anything else we have here? Oh, a couple of things you need. With your water bath canner will come a rack. This rack is what you put the jars on. You do not put the jars directly on the bottom of the, of the, of the boiling thing. The reason is because it will burn the contents of those jars on that element down there. Now, okay. Our stove is not the greatest. It just barely heats the water up to boiling. Um, one of these days we might get a better stove, but it works. Uh, and this is just water bath canning. This is not pressure canning. We do have plans for getting the electric pressure canner that uh, Becky over at Acre Homestead keeps talking about. And uh, we're getting kind of excited because it's coming here and it, we're gonna be able to order it here in a couple months. But anyway, so this thing here, you'll notice has notches here. As you're filling it up, you can actually hook it onto uh, the top of the pot here. In fact, let me just show you real quick. Uh, you see that's kind of steaming up, but see, this thing hooks there in the top to where you can set the jars on there, and then you can lower it down in there. Uh, we'll get to that later. Um, but your water bath canner comes with this, and this is very important, okay? Uh, don't toss this. In fact, um, along with your water bath canner comes some instructions, some very basic instructions. Uh, ours came with a sheet of that styrofoam, packing styrofoam. We actually stick it back in with that. And I put the label and the instructions down on that. Um, but, and then the other thing that's important is a cam lifter. And this is very important because those are jar lifter. Those jars are hot, hot, hot. Okay. And you see, it's got little rounded things here. This is for the uh, jars. You reach in there, pull them out. You're going to set them aside. You're going to be setting them on a cooling rack. That's easy. Pretty standard. None of this stuff is very complex. I got our um, water bath canner at Ace Hardware. Okay. Th these are not hard things to come by. If you rather order on Amazon, they have them there too. So really, these are all easy things to come by. So, okay. We're getting ready to do the jelly. And I'm going to start with the regular jelly first. So if I pull out my premium Sure Gel, uh, sure gel premium fruit pectin here, uh, this is the stuff that helps the jelly um, set up into jelly, the jelly consistency. It just doesn't work with just juice. Boy, that thing is uh, going to annoy me. And set up with just the juice, which I have the juice in the fridge right now. We're going to be boiling that up, of course. But uh, you'll notice the top here is yellow. That means you're in the sugar version. The pink bo that box is the non-sugar, possible non-sugar. You can do it with sugar or non-sugar or a combination of the both if you uh, do the calculations right. So uh, anyway, uh, it has quick and easy freezer jam recipes. It has quick and easy freezer jelly. Now the difference between jam and jelly, first of all, preserves. Preserves have everything in it. Seeds like blueberry, seeds, skins, everything. Chunky, seedy, everything. That's preserves. Jam doesn't have the seeds in it, but it does. it is chunky. Uh, so um, I'm trying to get to the place where I can do blueberry jam next year. We did blueberry preserve uh, and um, it was a little seedy. Yeah. Now with stone fruit, obviously it's easy to pull it out and make preserves. But uh, with uh, with the with uh, 
blueberries and blackberries and such, it's, it's a little harder. So that's one of the reasons why we got the tomato strainer, thinking maybe that would do it. Uh, but anyway, on the back here is cooked jam recipe and a cooked jelly recipe. Well, cooked jelly is where we're going because we got all the seeds and pulp out and we have our beautiful pomegranate juice that we're going to be using today. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. Oof, I could just open this jar and drink it right now. That is good stuff. We're going to be using a whole one of these though. Uh, I think it calls for four cups. Let me double check that on my handy dandy recipe. Um, yes, four cups of pomegranate juice, a quarter cup of lemon juice, uh, one package of sure gel, powdered pectin, and here we goes, five cups of sugar. Okay, that's a lot of sugar. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of sugar in jelly. Yeah. So anyway, we're going to start off with our uh, four cups of the juice. And I, I'm going to just go through here and uh, just, just read a little bit of this, the selections of this. Cause this is just from Simply Recipes. You look it up on Google, you can find it. It's one of the very first ones that normally come up. Um, but uh, we only bring the pomegranate juice and the lemon juice, which there's a quarter cup of lemon juice in this. Did I, did I say the lemon juice? Uh, I got my quarter cup out here for the lemon juice. Uh, and we're going to bring that to a boil. Um, in a six quart, well, we're using the eight quart. Um, add the pectin and stir in over high heat. Okay, now this is important. Uh, they make a big deal of this. So uh, bring to a boil, stirring occasionally to prevent scor scorching. So I've got a spoon back here that we'll, we'll stir with. And then we want to add the sugar. Now here's the thing. When you reach a full rolling boil that cannot be stirred down, and I'm going to turn the camera into the, the pot here, and hopefully we're not going to drop the camera in the pot, but I'm going to try to demonstrate what the full boil that you can't stir down is. Uh, you want to add the sugar. Return to a boil hard for exactly, and boil hard, return to a <laughs> boil and boil hard for exactly one minute. Then you remove from heat, let it stand for one minute. Now, all of this is timing, okay? My big old pot of water over here, the water bath canner, is getting hot too. The jars are getting hot. This is going to be hot. We're going to put this hot stuff in the hot jars. If you have cold jars, you're going to break your jars is what I hear. I've never broken a jar because we've always tried to follow the rules. If everything's hot, you got to keep everything hot. If things are cold, you got to do things. You're going to do whatever the freezer jelly is. Uh, you got to do the other way. But um, as all this is getting ready in that one minute, we need to have this thing boiling. So I'm sitting here looking. It's a little steamy. I'm going to go ahead and turn this up because we're getting down to time here. It's not going to be very long here and we're going to be ready uh, to have things going. So uh, I've got my extra water going. I've got this going. I've got water, uh, a jar sanitizing. I've got my little rack over here. Um, here we go. Are you nervous? Because <laughs> I've done this a couple times. Um, Never done it on camera, so we're going to get to see how much fun this is going to be. Uh, by the way, these things have a, these rings, you can see they have a little lip on them right there, okay? If you take that lip, find the place where the lid comes closest to the thread, put it in there and turn, I didn't kind of get to the closest point, that lid comes right off. Now this is not canned. But this works for even canned ones. You saw how easy that was. It was a little easier this time because of it's all, yeah, anyway. So I'm going to get four cups going here. Where's my cup measure? That's liters. Uh, okay, there's cups on that side. I need my glasses on. These are re re the minimum power reading glasses. I don't need much, just a little bit. Okay, so I am about a quarter cup short of a full four cups, which is disappointing. That means I didn't get quite get a full quart into these jars. So maybe we were closer to a, a gallon than I thought. Uh, Mrs. Bowtie has some 
plans for some of this juice too. We'll have to see how much we have for what when it gets down to it. So there's four cups. Yeah. All right, two jars empty. Now, they always tell you to use half pints for the jellies and stuff, and uh, half pint of jelly just doesn't last me long enough. So I'm making me some uh, full pint jellies with a wide mouth lid um, because I like, I love in the evening get me a. Um, piece of bread with a little jelly on it and just sit down and use that as an afternoon snack. Uh, that's after I've had my uh, my yogurt and my apple and I'll have that if I'm still hungry. So anyway, here we go. Now while this is warming up, oh, I gotta get my quarter cup in here. A quarter cup of lemon juice, always shake your lemon juice. Now. We have lemon trees out back. If you watch the video tours, you know we've got lemon trees out back. But they tell us to use this because this is very specifically pH balanced for a certain thing. And you've got to have that acidity for the right preservation. Uh, and apparently, not all lemons are created equal. And uh, they're not as acidic as they need to be if you're just getting your own lemon juice. So, um, they say everybody says, I mean, Stivers and, 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 and Gardner Scott and, and uh, Jess over at Roots and Refuge, Melissa Kanors, all of them say the same thing. So I figure if all of them are saying the same thing, I better do it too. So there is no product sponsorship here. I'm just going to Walmart and getting my stuff. So the lemon juice is in there. Um, I'm referring here to my uh, instructions again. Bring lemon juice and pomegranate juice and pectin to a reduce to a ro rolling boil, and this stuff will dissolve. And really, if you can read instructions. You can do this. It's not complicated. It's just a lot of pieces fit together. Um, don't let all this science experiment type stuff here uh, worry you. Uh, so now this thing talks about slowly stirring the contents of that package. Uh, into of the pectin powder into a sauce into cold water and a saucepan bring to a boil and medium heat oh this is what to do if your jam doesn't set um, so I'm just kind of skimming through here um, I am going to kind of stir this in the uh, this is starting to heat up a little bit yes it's starting to heat up the pomegranate juice and I'm going to have this open. I do want to go ahead and measure out those five cups of sugar though while all this is warming up because again at that point things are going to kind of go nuts in here and you're going to get to see it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my cup measure here and I am measuring out it said five cups right? Boy that's a lot of sugar. It sounds like a lot of sugar. It is a lot of sugar. So I'm just checking here, um, four cups pomegranate juice, quarter cup lemon juice, package, and five cups of sugar. Okay, we have it from the horse's mouth. One, two, three, four. Now, I've said this before, but uh, these videos are not totally made for you, but you are welcome to watch them. They're actually made for me. Uh, I watch what's going on in the garden. I log what's going on in the garden. You'll notice that all my videos are indexed. That's so that I can find things when I want to go back and look, see what I've planted in the garden or what I did. And 
Right now, you saw me measure out five cups. If this doesn't turn out right, I'll be able to go back to this video and make sure, did I put five cups of sugar in there? So these videos are really for me, and uh, I'm happy to have you all along, though. So comment on the side there. I'm going to set this uh, bowl aside with five cups of sugar. I'm going to cover it with a, another plate, and... That's my quarter cup for the lemon juice. I'm going to put this over out of the way. We do not have a large commercial kitchen, obviously. Um, so we kind of make do. You notice we have these big ceramic tiles. We got uh, these 16 inch ceramic tiles from a friend of mine who just had a bunch of them to give away. Um, if I went to the store and bought them, I'd buy the 24 inch tiles to set the top of here. They have little feet on them that I bought at Ace Hardware. And uh, this is the little clear plastic, whatever they are, things that stick on the bottom so that it's actually got a little space between there. So when I set a big pot on the counter, it doesn't burn my counter. That's all it takes. Uh, eventually, maybe one day we'll have new counters, but uh, it's not happening yet. So, here we go. This is heating up. All right, this is starting to heat. You can see it's starting to steam a little bit in here. I'm going to go ahead and start adding the pectin, and uh, Mrs. Bowtie may chime in from the front, from the other room, from behind camera, if she hears something, uh, she knows to keep an eye on me sometimes. You've seen my shenanigans. So this is about to get to a boil, so I'm going to... Uh, uh, move the camera here so you can actually see what it looks like being on a rolling boil that you can't stir down. Okay, so you can hear the uh, water bath can or boil under here. You can see this is starting to bubble up. I tried to get it stirred while I was repositioning the camera. It's only been, hadn't been a full minute. But uh, you can see it's starting to uh, get a little bubbly in there. Not boiling yet, but it's starting to get bubbly. Just doesn't look like that much, does it? It's funny. I'm gonna go ahead and get my uh, sugar ready over here. You can hear the water bath canner starting to fire up, sounding good. So everything's kind of coming together. Big thing about that water bath canner, it is huge. Okay, and you can see how. It's too big for our burner, so I actually turn it on just to get a little more heat on there. I've got it mostly on the other one and a little bit on this burner um, to try to get it heating up as, as hot as I can. But it takes that thing forever to heat up. It really does. So this is nothing new, folks. You can watch videos on this all day long. Um, so this... You know, what I'm doing is is findable. This is Now you'll notice, see, when I stir, the boiling doesn't stop. So, got out a little bit too high a heat, I reduced that a little bit. Um, and so, now I'm going to, so at this point I would ask Mrs. Bowtie if, uh, what kind of heat I'm supposed to have that on. Mrs. Bowtie. Over high heat, it says, okay. It said high heat. I'll put it back up to high heat. So you can see this thing looking kind of juicy. All that sugar has dissolved. It didn't take very long. This thing is gonna get up to boiling here momentarily. This thing here is getting ready to start boiling. That water bath can will boil faster if you keep it covered a lot faster. You can hear it sizzling up over there. That's the water bath canner. And you can see my teapot of water over here boiling away. 
I'm just gonna keep it boiling till we're ready. Ready, 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 Freddy. But it's hot. And again, remember, the contents are gonna be hot, the water's gonna be hot, the jars and the dishwasher are gonna be hot, so everything's gonna be hot, 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 ready to go. And uh, I think it said uh, six to eight. It says how many jars um, I need. Six to seven half pint jars. So I figure I have, I'm gonna fill two full pints and the rest half pints. How's that sound? That'll be um, four half pints and then yeah, that'll work. Cause I might give away some of these too. Oh, I wish you could smell this. It actually does smell good. So this thing is on the edge. I'm starting to see little bubbles and royals going up in here. It is steaming though. And one of the biggest challenges that I have is using the scooper to get everything out. So this will get ugly trying to fill. I'll admit, I get a little panicky. Look at there, it's starting to boil. You can see it. Getting exciting. Stuff's about to go crazy or up in here. Yeah. So now you see it's boiling, but when I do like that, it's not really boiling, it's, it takes it just a moment to, but here in just a minute, it's gonna be ready. Woo! I, when I stir it, it's not stopping boiling. I'm gonna let it go one more half, oh, look at there, yeah, now it's really starting to broil up, bubble up in it. Now this foam in here, some places say to scoop it out, some places don't. Um, most of the people I hear say don't worry about, they don't worry about it, and so I'm probably not gonna worry about it either. Um, it doesn't bother me. Yeah, see, I'm stirring, it is still boiling. So this thing is ready to rock. So I am going to take this off, put it over here, turn off that heat, and move the camera. All righty, here we go. I've got jars set out here. I got my little funnel. It's been set. It took me about a minute to get the jars out. I've got some rings down off camera over here. You can hear that water in the water bath can canner is bubbling. It's not, wouldn't call it boiling quite yet, but it's pretty darn close. So I am going to remove this, take this over here to the sink, and we're going to start filling. This has been sitting about a minute. So I'm feeling pretty good with this. When you're filling this, it says you fill to within a half inch of the top. So I'm gonna to try to get as close to that as possible. This stuff is thickening up already. That is pretty darn close. Okay, there's that. Oh, sending me a text. They should know. Oh, new Amazon login detected. Folks, if you're getting texts like that, it is a scam. They want you to click the link that's on there, which is not Amazon, and they want you to give them the, your username and password. Do not do that. It is a thief trying to steal your information, it's called phishing. Anybody can get your phone number. There's nothing secure about texting. 
okay, this is hot. I'm going to have to move these, not pick them up, because I don't want to, ouch, that is hot. I don't want to drop these. Ooh, see, like that. Doggone it. That was close. You can see I'm filling these to about half an inch, within half an inch of the lid. And it is starting to set up nicely, which makes me excited. If I'm going to need another jar here before I'm done, that's okay because they are over there ready. Now, folks, this didn't take very long, did it? See, it's really thickening up. It is really, really thickening up. Nice. And this is going to be awesome jelly. That's about within half an inch. I'm going to have to get another jar. Now, in all likelihood, you're going to have a jar that is not quite full. That's the jar you put in the fridge and eat tomorrow morning. Well, not yet, but right? you can't do it. Getting down to the end here. A little bit more for this, and then I'll put the rest in one more jar. Wow, that's awesome. So within about a half inch, I'm going to put a few of these lids on here. Oops, dropped one. Nice warm lids. They're not that warm because I pulled them out, you know, a full minute ago, and they do cool quickly. So. Uh, I'm going to drop that in there. I will be rinsing everything. So, editing Dave here. I just realized I forgot to wipe the rims of my jars. Oops. I'm supposed to always wipe the rims of your jars. Well, the canning is done. Everything seems to have set. I know I kept the rims pretty clean. We'll see how it works out. But, uh, yeah, that was not good. Ugh. We've always wiped the rims of our jars with white vinegar, and uh, that's according to Zach Stivers and um, the Honeystead, both with white vinegar. Some people just use a damp rag, but, uh, well, oops. Back to your video. I am missing a lid. Now, folks, you don't yoink these down all the way, okay? In your water bath canning, you just want to take these and snug them down, okay? You're not, if you're a guy doing this, you're not, you're not screwing this on like, like, like the, I don't know, like the pickle jar that you don't want no one else to eat out of. These, you need to let them, the, the air has to be able to escape because it's going to be pressure canning. These lids, you hear that pop? These lids are going to pop and suck in after the water bath canner. And you know, see, that needs to go down just a little more. But you are not tightening these very tight at all, okay? You get one more jar, lid, and ring. For the rest of this, and I just have my fingers all over that. I know, someone can tell me I'm not supposed to do that. I forgot, did I give you my disclaimer that I am not a chef, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a scientist? Dude, this is just a guy. Because this stuff is simple. It really is simple. Okay? It's what I hope people can learn from this. The only reason I like to do this for other people. Uh, I do it for myself mostly, but I do it for other people. Because you need to know, this stuff is simple. If you need to provide yourself with food, you can provide yourself with food. This stuff is easy. Can you imagine if there were problems you needed to get some other food? You could trade this up. People would love this. This is gourmet stuff here. Okay, I don't like going in that direction, but there you go. So, oh yeah, this is boiling nicely. So now you'll notice this is boiling real nicely. It's got way too much water in it. I am going to put this rack in here now, right? Already, these jars are going to be hot, so I'm going to stick them in here kind of without hesitating. 
Now that jar right there, I'm a little concerned about, or was it the front? One of those jars, I'm not sure if the lid is fresh. I may have recycled a lid. Uh, now we're going now. Okay, so we're putting this in there. You'll notice everything is underwater. You'll see that right there. It's about an inch underwater. That's good. That's where you want to be. If you didn't have enough water there, that's what the teapot's for, to fill up a little bit more. But I'm not going to need it, because this came out perfect. So, you need to push these whoop, in just a little bit. And there we go. Now, your water bath can. This thing has to come to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you have to boil it for like 10 minutes. And I'm going to look here on the instructions. Try 10 minutes. Processed jelly, processed jams. Oh, processed jellies for five minutes, processed jams for 10 minutes. Um, okay, so interesting. Jellies don't have to be processed as long. That's, that's cool. So once this thing comes to a boil, and a lot of creative ways you can check that. Oh, 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 it's, it's slanted. Uh-oh, good Lord. Help. You probably saw that on the camera. I did not catch that. Okay, yee, want those to be straight. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off since I don't need that now, I know I don't need it. And I'm going to come up here. It's almost to a boil. Once it gets to a boil, you process that. It says five minutes for jellies, 10 minutes for jams. I'm gonna process it for 10 minutes either way. So in fact, I'm gonna go ahead and push 10 minutes here. Oops, how about cancel? Timer, 10 minutes. Okay. 10 minutes on the timer. As soon as this gets to a boil, we go with the timer. got this boiling, I've started the timer, uh, we're down to 52 seconds. I even got the juice ready for the next batch, for the sugar-free batch. And uh, I've done a few calculations um, in my head, and I looked at other recipes. Oh, I forgot the lemon juice, see there? Ha! I'm going to, I got six cups instead of four cups of this uh, pomegranate juice this time. And so I'm going to put more than a quarter cup in here. Quarter cup plus, maybe an eighth of a cup. So three eighths of a cup. That's uh, looks like 90 milliliters. That's going to be done with the lemon juice. But that is 10 minutes. What kind of timing is that? I really want to be able to go directly from this batch into the next batch. So I'm going to briefly turn this off now. I'm going to be using the same water for the next uh, batch. I'm not too worried about it losing heat. It's not going to lose that much heat. So I am going to pull this off here a little bit. It's going to be boiling away. I need to clear a spot over here. And this is just the knife sharpener that came with our knives. Makes a great lid lifter. And this is where, folks, do not reach your fingers in there. This will land you in the emergency room and everything will be ruined. Everything. Okay? Use the little grabbers. Don't chintz on getting these cheap. They're cheap. They're really cheap. And I do, I tilt them ever so slightly, but you don't want to tilt them much. And you put them over here on your rack. The reason why I tilt them slightly is just to get most of the, oh, did you hear that pop? Let's get most of the water off. 
that's a good sign because that's the jar I was worried about. When these jars pop, that is a sign of a good seal. As I pull these out, listen for these popping. That's my least full one right there. Oh, I just heard a muted pop. You want to hear those pops though. That is a good thing. You don't want to disturb these. You don't want to shuffle these. Uh, Mrs. Bowtie fusses at me when I do that very slight tilt, but frankly it's tilted that much sitting in here on the rack, so I'm going to say it doesn't matter that much. Oh, that one already popped. I just heard it. So, those are out and done. First batch down. We got two full pints, four half pints. Some of those will be gifts. I'm sure I can find someone who wants some pomegranate jelly. I'm going to turn on that back burner again. Whoop, whoop, I need to get the rack out. Ow. See, I don't want it to... <laughs> Didn't I tell you? I just told you. That's hot. That's hot too. All right. things I get up to and Mrs. Bowtie isn't here to supervise. That'll be cooling over here. I'm going to stick that back up there. And we're ready for the next batch, folks. I'm going to go ahead and start this uh, kettle going again. And I got, you, you saw me step off camera and I got all these cleaned up. So, got the lemon juice in here. Same process, folks. We're doing the same, even though there's no sugar, it's the exact same process. Now, <laughs> I say that. Not exactly the same. Because when you're doing your no sugar added, it says down here, and again, if you can read the directions, okay, it's really not... And it takes me a few times to read, I'll admit. I have to read it over and over to, to understand. It says, so bring to a full boil. Boil doesn't stop bubbling when stirred. On high heat, stirring constantly. Boil one minute, stirring constantly. Remove from heat and then stir in Splenda granulated or Splenda packets. Skim off any foam with a metal spoon. Okay? With this stuff, you, have, you put in your sweetener after that boil. Okay. So... You're not putting in as much. I'm doing six cups, last time I did four. I did five cups of sugar. I'm going to do one and a half cups of sweetener. So this thing is heating now. No, it's not. Now it's heating. This thing is heating now. I'm gonna get one and a half cups, about a quarter of the amount of sugar. Remember, I've got more juice in here, okay? I got more juice in here because I still wanna get as many jars. Um, but four cups of this stuff, it wouldn't have given me as much. I've upped the amount of juice. I'm probably not going to get this much, but I'm going to get enough to taste it and know if I did it wrong or right. So, one of the important things about this that I'm trying to figure out, and I really am trying to figure this out, is that there is an aftertaste to these sweeteners, some, some of these sweeteners. Now, Mrs. Bowtie and I have been using stevia for so long, we don't even taste that. And I tell you what, folks, you can teach your body to like anything, pretty much, uh, as far as good foods. And um, I don't think this is any different. Well, I'm putting a cup and a half in here. Now, here's the thing about this stuff, folks, and I cannot stress this enough. When you put sugar in hot liquid, it dissolves pretty quickly, as we just saw. However, when you put stevia or Splenda in a hot liquid, it clumps, and it's really annoying. 
because it gets all clumpy and you get them with these big globs in your jelly and um, we, you have to stir like five times more to get that out. So what we do is rather than just dumping it in, we slowly sprinkle it in and let it kind of form a powder over the surface while we're stirring. And if you do that, and just a real thin coating of powder and then keep stirring, it'll stir in a lot better. Uh, it still clumps a little bit, but it doesn't take much to, to stir it out. So we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna see that. This thing is probably already boiling. Um, if I don't get as many jars out, I'm gonna need, I'm definitely gonna need this extra pot of water. I need to say how, yeah, there's plenty in there. Definitely gonna need more water. In fact, I'm tempted to go ahead and add it in and start boiling some more. It needs to be an inch or two above the jars for water bath canning. So I'm going to go now. Yep, that's hot. I know. See? Now you know. The more you know. It's awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this teapot again. Keep an eye on that pot for me. Let me know if it starts boiling. Okay. That should be plenty. You notice I left the little thing up because I don't want it to whistle. Because I want it to boil without whistling. I want it to get going. Okay, six cups of pomegranate juice, and I'm saying this not just for you, I'm saying this for me too, because uh, this is my uh, log of what I did. I've got six cups of pomegranate juice, three-eighths of a cup of lemon juice, and we're bringing it to a boil. And I'm gonna, when this starts getting close, I'll show you what I'm talking about with the uh, sprinkling of the sweetener in. Oh, <laughs> good Lord, I almost didn't put the pectin in. Okay, that would have been a mistake. That's why I do the videos, to see, did I put the pectin in? All I got was pomegranate juice. Sweet pomegranate juice. A little stevia sweet. All right, here we go. I've got a little bit of time because this thing's going to take a while to get up to boiling. Oh, that thing needs to get on up to high. All right, one pack of Sure Gel Premium Fruit Pectin for use in less or no sugar needed recipes. Okay. And that's the difference between the yellow box and the pink box. In fact, I was going to show you on the top of the instructions. Remember, the last one was yellow. Top of this one, it's pink. That means you're in the, no, the less or the reduced or no sugar added. I am a diabetic. Um, I'll, you know, as long as my doctor isn't listening, I'll confess that I do not eat as well as I should, but I do keep my blood sugar at a pretty good level. Uh, with the help of uh, a couple of medications. I will enjoy the sugar jellies, um, but I will enjoy more the non-sugar, the no sugar added jellies because I know that they are not as bad for me. So this is starting to get warm, getting exciting. Getting rid of things as I don't need them. I haven't made too much of a mess on the floor. I have stirred in <laughs> the Sure Gel Premium Fruit Pectin this time. Uh, so, see, I'm doing a second batch now, and I could have done a lot more. If I, if I knew that this recipe was good, I would have done 12 cups of this and 
three cups of the sweetener and been done with it. But I, I wanted some back. I want to kind of test and see how they compare. Um, not all my fruit and all, not all my eggs in one basket, so to speak. Uh, so we're, we are just learning. And as we go, we're learning more and more. We did it with the, with the blueberries. And we had the uh, no sugar added, we had low sugar, and we had regular sugar. And in fact, just today, someone commented to me, I had the no sugar added, and it was awesome. And I told them how I did it, and no one could believe it, as we were sitting around the lunch table today. So this is getting close. This is going to have to come to that same rolling boil. We're not adding sugar. Now, if I was adding like maybe half sugar, half stevia, um, I would do the sugar thing at the boil point. But I'm going two extremes. I'm going all sugar and then no sugar added. There are sugars in the pomegranate. These are all popped. Just touching the top. When that top is sunk in, that lid has a natural rise in the middle. When it's sunk in, that means it's sealed. That's an indicator that there is suction. But you don't touch those lids until they have cooled. They have to sit there for 24 hours, folks. You let them sit. That lid makes a seal, and it makes it good. I'm going to have another rack out here before we start this, before we pull this one out. I don't need this out here anymore. A rare look into the bow tie pantry. Not funny lead. This is mint. So you can see this is starting to boil, but if I stir it, it's not really a rolling boil. It's it sort of simmers a little bit, but now it's starting to boil. It simmers a little bit. Now it's starting to get to a boil that you cannot stir down. That's what I want. Now it's going to have to boil for a full minute. Again, we're not adding the sugar. We would add the sugar at this point and then get it back to a boil and then let it boil for a minute. But the stevia gets added after this full minute. I'm using the timer on my camera to tell me when it's been a full minute. Forty seconds. All right, that is over a minute. So I'm going to pull this over here. I'm going to turn the camera a little bit. Now, this is the important thing I was talking about. I'm going to, let me turn off that heat before uh, go any further. My little teapot's boiling over. I'm going to turn it down a little couple notches. This is what I was talking about, folks. Okay, here we go. If you just dump this in, it'll clump. But if you stir this in a little bit at a time, it will dissolve a lot faster. Now you'll notice it is clumping a little bit. See that clump in there? But it's not quite as bad than if you were to just dump it all in there. Woo! 
That was a little much. And I did get the slotted spoon this time. That helps a little bit to break it up. Yeah, I got a, got a clump in there. And invariably it happens. I'm not even halfway through it yet. It is a little more difficult to do with the stevia. Now, I know there is some liquid stevia and some other stuff. I may have to look into that. I'm getting a little wild with my stirring here. using the edges to help break it up. You can see what I'm talking about with the clumping. When you dump it all in at once, it just is so difficult. It creates a lot of challenge. And yes, I need to look at the liquid. I'm almost done here. It has been a full minute, so we can start Put filling bottles any minute, as soon as I can get this all dissolved. Yeah, this would definitely be a lot easier with the liquid stuff. I never thought of that until just now. My sister-in-law, Donna, We'll know exactly what to order. I will have to ask her. I will put it in the description when I find out. I will edit the description and add it. Okay, so you can see there's just a little bit of clumps left in there. Not much. I'm using the edge to get rid of whatever is left. There's nothing on the bottom. It has been well over a minute. So I need to get this moving. So this towel goes away. I'm gonna have to go get me some uh, jars. So here we go, folks. Let me go ahead, ow, that hurt. And turn that front burner on. This thing should be about at a boil. It is truly boiling. That's wonderful. I got my funnel here. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the spoon. Got my funnel and my ladle. We are ready to go. I'm going to fill up my two pint jars first. Now folks, I cannot stress enough, if you're doing experiments like this, be sure to label your bottles. Uh, I'm going to be keeping these on separate racks. So I'll, I'm hoping I'll have a good idea of which is which. I'll never see. I'm filling up to a half inch. Oops, I stuck my finger in there. Let me do that. Sterilization is key here, folks. Yeah, I'm definitely not going to eat all these jars. I said if this experiment works next time I'll just do 12 cups of juice at one run and make all pints full pints well I don't need some to give away but you know what I mean
Look at there. Almost. As full as that other one was. So here we go. Oh, we gotta get the lids. I didn't get lids for the big ones. Uh, here we go. All right. I did get rings. All right. Looks like we're ready to rock and roll here. Let me get some jars in the canner. The water bath canner at least. Ow! Woo! That was hot. This thing is definitely boiling. Boiling, boiling. Alright. Yeah, the thing I didn't do on the last batch, I didn't balance these very well. You're supposed to balance these around. And I've got an odd number here. But, something like that. Stick them in. And they went all the way under. Yes, thank you. Ah! Whoa! Did you see that? I almost did it. Almost made an emergency room call. Don't need that, do we? Okay. Those have to go in a little bit for this particular water bath canner because the lid doesn't fit down right if it doesn't. So there we go. Turn that back on high. I'm going to set a uh, timer for 10 minutes, but I'm not going to start it until this thing starts boiling. So here we go again, second batch. about one more way of uh, preserving the juice that we are considering and I've already mentioned it in the other video about uh, harvesting the uh, juices uh, but um, one of the things we'll do is we'll just take the juice shake it up real good and then put it in an ice cube tray just a regular ice cube tray stick it in the freezer and when they freeze you pop out the ice cubes and stick them in a Ziploc bag um, and then two ice cubes make a juice glass so um, I'll like thaw out eight ice cubes and I have a, a jar that I'll keep a jar and I'll stick a bunch of ice cubes in there and you know maybe half the tray but uh, there'll be you know four glasses and another four, four glasses um, come out of one of these so uh, it's two tablespoons for, per ice cube in this particular ice cube tray it's really easy to figure out uh, this is a Rubbermaid that you get at I don't know Walmart probably but uh, two tablespoons per ice cube, four tablespoons for a juice glass. So that's the other thing that we'll do is uh, we'll store things in ice cube, ice cube form. We store our lemon juice in ice cube form. Um, I actually stored pomegranate juice. <laughs> no, this is the pomegranate. Grapefruit juice. I stored grapefruit juice in uh, ice cube form. And I had grapefruit juice every day. In fact, I have an afternoon snack where I get a yogurt, an apple, and uh, something else. Sometimes it's a banana, sometimes it's a piece of bread with some jelly on it, um, sometimes it's a glass of juice. So that's my afternoon regular little thing that I do uh, that seems to do pretty good with my diabetes um, and keeping my numbers good. But now, uh, grapefruit juice, some of those medications don't work good 
um, with grapefruit juice. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that because that's very important to us, or at least to me. But Mrs. Bowtie enjoys it too. And I know we did the pomegranate juice. That pomegranate juice is so good. Oh, goodness gracious. It is so good. But uh, we're down to 58 seconds here, and uh, I just wanted to cover a few last things, and then I'll, we'll be pulling these jars out, and we'll be done with the video. I, I have a feeling this has probably gotten to be a little bit long. Um, but uh, it didn't take too very long for me to do. Um, it's just after 6 o'clock now. I'll have to check my videos to see uh, what time it was when I started, but uh, the clock is right there. So it probably took a few hours. And uh, I got, uh, what do we got? We've got uh, six jars here and another five jars in there. Um, some half pints to give away if I want to and some full pints to use. So I'm excited. <laughs> there we go. So uh, this is a good thing. Three, two, two, one, zero, and we're done. So you probably saw on the fast part of the video, I pulled out another rack here. This uh, will help me keep separate the no sugar jellies. Listen for the clicks, because that one's about to do it. One. That was one of the little jars. There it is. That one just, nope. One of these just popped. There's another. So these three have popped. Waiting for the just two big ones. There's a little bump in the middle of this lid. It's about to pop. This one's just about to pop. I'm sure of it. But that's the sign of the seal. So, anyway, I don't know. I, first time I did this, I was a little bit scared to do it, but we got through it. Mrs. Bowtie and I did tons and tons of blueberries. And we did some peach preserves not preserves, peach jam, and the peach jam went okay. I actually um, did the Pindo date after that, Pindo date jelly after that, and all by myself. That's the first one I did by myself and uh, went okay. So this is officially my fourth time doing this. Uh, first two times I was assisting, but uh, very exciting. We got some good stuff over here, this pomegranate jelly. It looks really good. I do notice the uh, the sugar stuff is a little clearer. This uh, stevia stuff has a little bit of milkiness to it, but it's still beautiful. It's a beautiful color. So we'll let these cool for 24 hours before we do anything. They, they literally have to sit there and not be touched. That cabinet, that part of the counter is off limits, so make sure you're not doing any big baking projects in a small kitchen after that because uh, you ain't got that. Fortunately, we have other tables we can use around and we kind of spread out when we need to. But uh, anyway, so this is Bowtie Dave for Bowtie Life. Uh, thank you for watching through this far. Um, keep an eye out for more videos. If you want to follow along with more of our stuff in the garden or in the kitchen, be sure and hit the thumbs up on this video and subscribe to the channel even more importantly because that will let you know when more stuff is being uh, uploaded. And I'm trying to upload uh, two or three a week right now, if not more. 
Um, but uh, you hit the subscribe and you hit the little notification bell to get the notifications when things are uploaded. And uh, you will be informed as to what's being uploaded. And, you know, I do that and, and uh, some, some, sometimes, you know, I see a video that just doesn't interest me and that's okay. Sometimes you're going to have videos, even from your subscribed channels, that just don't interest you. But uh, that doesn't bother me either. I'm just glad you're here. And i uh, glad if you had just enjoyed this video, I'm glad you enjoyed this video. But this is something empowering. Know that you can make a little luxury item in your kitchen. This is no gourmet kitchen. This is just regular stuff I get at the hardware store. And, and uh, Walmart sells the jars, the bell, the... Uh, ball mason jars uh, they're the good quality jars and and I just buy a little bit at a time so we have quite a stock back in the back bedroom of uh, jars and lids and rings and stuff but uh, anyway um, <laughs> as always y'all have a blessed day